Hello and welcome to News Click. The Karnataka Cabinet has finally adopted uh, the bill popularly known as the Anti-Superstition Bill but formally called the Bill Against Inhuman Evil Practices and Black Magic. However, uh, the bill clearly uh, involves many compromises and several aspects such as astrology, Vastu Shastra and other such beliefs and practices have been excluded from the purview of the bill. To discuss these and related issues, we have with us today Professor Narendra Nayak, who is President of the Federation of Indian Rationalists Associations. Professor Nayak, welcome to News Click. Thank you, sir. Uh, how do you view the adoption of this bill, the compromises that have gone into it, and what do you think are the steps uh, which are going to follow? Put it in one single sentence. Something is better than nothing. Because so far there has been absolutely no legislation about these things. So there's a beginning. Yeah. Well, this beginning, I hope, will be the foundation for a good, strong anti-superstition movement in our state and all over the country. So I'm just hoping for that because once people start questioning, the questioning process will go on and on and on. And finally, we may reach a stage where the people start questioning all their superstitious practices and probably evolve into a better society as years roll by. So in a sense, what you're saying is that the legislation is an enabling uh, provision based on which movements can raise issues uh, and challenge uh, superstitious beliefs, uh, etc. And it therefore prepares the ground for such a thing. Yes, that's what I feel. Yeah. Or that's what I hope. Brother. That's right. That's right. Uh, uh, Professor Naik, since you're uh, the president of the Rationalists uh, Associations, uh, let me ask you, there's little doubt that the Rationalist movement has made big strides uh, against uh, various specific superstitions and beliefs. Uh, uh, in your case, for example, you have been actively involved in exposing this uh, business about blindfolded reading uh, and so on. Uh, at the same time, you are also acutely aware that in India today, society is rife with uh, superstitious uh, beliefs uh, etc. Uh, so what do you think are the strengths and the weaknesses of the anti-superstition campaigns? When you want to uh, teach people to question, you take up those issues which have the maximum negative impact on people. For example, you took the most recent example of my campaign against something called as midbrain activation. Yeah. It was first uh, promoted as something coming from Japan. One Makoto Shichida, he was supposed to be the originator of that. And then people here picked it up. One Nityananda of uh, Karnataka picked it up. One Ravi Shankar's gang picked it up. And they started giving it a color of some Vedic or Indian or ancient uh, Purani, Bhaus Samskriti wala and things like that. And they started exploiting it. And once our campaign took off, some people discreetly withdrew from it. Mm. But the others are continuing. And some people gave it a more allegedly modern scientific background, saying that we are balancing the left and right brains, mm. as if there are two pieces of lumps of something, piece cut here and put there and cut there and put here. Actually, the people don't even realize that the left and right brains are connected by the corpus callosum. So they are constantly in communication with each other. You don't need this blindfolded stupid thing for people to show that the brains are going to be balanced yeah. or something like that. So you pick up the most rampant of such things and you make it an example to the people so that the thinking process in their mind starts. Yes. I have seen people who come to us with one or two issues and later on joined our movement too. Yes. 
That is because when you see an issue that affects you, your child or your family, where you do not get any support from anybody, you naturally come to the rationalist. Yeah. And once you come to us, you come to know what we are. You overcome your all previous inhibitions yeah. and the preconceived notions that you have about us and join us. Yeah. The rationalists have been at this game for a long time now. Yes. Uh, and yet, uh, you would be the first to admit, I think, that our society is still full of superstitions. Mm -hmm. So where do you think uh, a problem lies? What more do you think requires to be done? Or is this something that's just waiting for momentum to catch up? See, the momentum has caught on in certain issues. For example, people got the courage to speak up about this. God men, some got the courage to complain, some got the courage to go to court. Yeah. And they have been prosecuted for it. Yeah. That probably came through the rationalist movement. Though we are not officially something which likes to take the credit for something, sure. we say that our campaigns have made people think, question and realize about these things. So our strength is there. Our weakness is there in this that we do not have the adequate manpower, I should say the people power because I don't want to be sexist and say manpower. We should have more people who are involved. We should have more people who are capable of communicating to the people, challenging such claims. Uh, so in a sense, what you're saying is the rationalist movement in doing anti-superstition campaigns is not just uh, promoting another magic show, uh, if you like. But what it wants to do is to promote critical thinking yes. uh, and a scientific outlook. Yes. That is why we call it Miracle Exposure Program. Right. It's just a beginning into the pathway to rational thinking. Right. When you want to make somebody think rationally, you pick up those examples. Yeah. For example, if somebody asks you the origin of the universe, you say Big Bang. Okay, fine. Then how does life originate? Evolution. Then finally that man will come to this, that hamare bagal ke gali mein, there is one Baba who is dipping his hands into boiling oil. Ye kaise hota hai? So that time, when you try to explain it, he is not satisfied. Yeah. He said, you do it and show. Yeah. That's why we started doing these things. Yeah. And that is how the campaign picked up. That's how it became a miracle exposure right. program. Let me now turn to another aspect. Historically, uh, the rationalist movement and atheist movements in our country have had much in common uh, with each other. Uh, the late Narendra Dabolkar, however, uh, took a rather nuanced position with regard to religion and uh, felt that a frontal attack on religion is not worth uh, the effort and that it may alienate uh, people, etc. What is your view and approach towards uh, this? If you look at Narendra Dhabalkar, Narendra Dhabalkar mainly came from social movements. Right. He was an atheist, all right. He was working more for social movements. He joined the rationalist movement when he saw Premanand's program doing this miracle exposure and that's when he joined us. Yes. Of course, that's quite long back. And then it picked up like that. Right. Of course, some splits and all came anyway. Sure. And when it picked up, he took a stand that if we go all out and out against these things, people will just shut their minds to us. So we will concentrate on the most blatant things. For example, the social boycott he has taken up. Yes. Then he took up this uh, anti-superstition bill again anti-black magic and right. agori practices right. in Maharashtra. He was struggling for a decade. Every time I meet him, he'll say, I have to meet this minister or that MLA or something like that. They managed to get it passed in the legislative assembly. Then it got blocked in the legislative council and it took nearly a decade. And the sacrifice of one of our biggest activists to make that bill into law. Perhaps if Dabolkar was not killed, I'm very sorry to say that, it wouldn't have become a law. Right. Um, Professor Naik, there are many strands 
of the rationalist movement, as you yourself said, with Narendra Dabolkar, there were splits and uh, splinters and so on. Uh, but there are many strands of the rationalist movement. There is the people science movement. There are movements to promote critical thinking uh, and so on. What do you think it will take to create a common platform of all these groups working towards a common goal? We, as it is, I should say we have a common platform. We all attend each other's meetings. We have programs at each other's meetings. Yeah. When there is a protest, everybody joins in. Yeah. So I think we are all together in that aspect. That we stand for certain basic values, say secularism, humanism, equality, all that. But maybe we work in our own fields of specialization more and more. For example, somebody working for the people science movement, if he or she sees a miracle person, I should say, doing some miracle, they know that it is nonsense, yeah. but they do not have the wherewithal to reproduce it, right. expose it, or even uh, teach people how to do it. Right. That's where we come in. Right. So that's the way we all work together. In fact, Federation of Indian Rationalist Associations is a federation of around 80 groups, right. various humanist, atheist, secular, rationalist groups who believe in one common thing that we all should have scientific temper and we should all work for a secular society in which all human beings are equal. Professor Nayak, thank you very much. I think this has been a an illuminating discussion and thrown light not only on a rationalist approach but also on uh, the utility, if you like, of the rationalist movement towards creating a critical uh, thinking and a, uh, a scientific outlook uh, in our country. Uh, we wish you all the best in your work and hope that the passage of this bill in Karnataka will provide a real fillip uh, to the movements and that movements can take advantage of this uh, moment in our history. Thank you, Professor Nayak.